Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. Welcome back to another Time Pieces for Tomorrow video. Now today on my wrist, I've got the Tudor Black Bay 58. It's a 39 millimeter timepiece. It's got uh, 200 meters, 660 feet of water resistance. But what do I want to talk about within this video? And that is why Tudor should not be considered a compromise. Now, not to misquote Mr. Hans Wilsdorf, the guy that uh, founded both Rolex and Tudor, <clears throat> but to summarize and and, uh, you know, again, you can read his quote that I've thrown up here on the screen, but he was saying that, you know, Tudor is essentially a, a poor man's Rolex, you know, a more affordable Rolex. And that's created a lot of perception problems for Tudor. And I want to kind of undo some of those perception problems and, and attempt to explain within this video why Tudor is not a compromise. And by the way, check out all my other wristwatch videos here on my channel. Subscribe to YouTube.com forward slash Irix guy, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. But I've got a ton of Tudor videos now and tons more coming soon. So check those out. But let's go ahead and jump over to my little camera right here. And I'm going to show you up close and personal the Tudor Black Bay 58. So upon closer inspection, you can see I got some scratches on it, man. I wear this thing. I don't just, I don't just do desktop diving. Now I do some desktop diving. You can see there there's wear, you know, a little bit of noticeable wear on the bracelet and that's because when you're at a desk and stuff you know you, you tend to wear that side of the wristwatch whereas this side doesn't have any noticeable wear in the case itself man i got scratches on it because i actually wear this thing but just looking at that the case profile the uh the domed sapphire crystal meaning that it sticks up above the aluminum bezel and that's right i said aluminum bezel because it has an aluminum bezel insert, which is actually good because over time, this timepiece should develop a pleasing patina. You know, that's one thing you don't get with ceramic bezels is the patina. You know, a ceramic bezel today versus a ceramic bezel 20 or 30 years from now, unless something catastrophic happens, that ceramic bezel is probably gonna look just as good as new without any sort of visible fading. But that's not the case with aluminum. Aluminum develops patina. You know, just from the sunlight, if you wear it in the ocean like I do, and swimming pools like I do, you know, swimming pools have chlorine. Wear it in a lake, you know, there's stuff floating around in the lake, <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. I wear it in the shower. You can see I've got, I got soap scum on here. There's soap scum I need to, I need to rub off. But yeah, Tudor is not a compromise. The reason being is that, you know, first of all, when you look at this deployment clasp, I mean, that screams Rolex. And obviously, you know, justifiably so, because Tudor is Rolex's little little sister brand, I guess you'd say. You can see right here, it's got these, uh, I think that's, uh, what's that material? It's these little ball bearings. It's, it's a really cool material. Comment below if you know the name of it. But it just makes the longevity of this deployment clasp greatly enhanced. Now, you know, one thing they don't have, at least with this reference, they don't have a glide lock style mechanism. Now at the time of filming this, Tudor has released a Tudor boutique only uh, Black Bay 58 that does have a glide lock style clasp, which I don't really care about because I've got it adjusted like I want it. You can see there's three micro adjustments right here. And then obviously you can remove links. It uses screws, so very high quality bracelet. You can see the screws right there. 4K video, crank it up if you've got a 4K display, you can see all the detail. But the bracelet is just as comfortable as a Rolex oyster bracelet. You can see the design. It's slightly different. They put these faux rivets. That's a, a topic of controversy. A lot of people say, oh man, I hate them. I never notice them while I'm wearing it. And uh, actually they were put there because it, it was a vintage type look for the bracelet. You know, they wanted to make this look like an old style Tudor. So that's why they added those fake rivets. You can see the inside of the bracelet, just like a I mean, pretty much just like a Rolex Oyster bracelet. The case back, you got that Oyster style case, you can see. The case itself, very, uh, you know, very similar to Rolex. Now you can see here, I've got scratches on the side of the case because I actually wear this thing, man. I do wear it. And uh, you see some scratches and some soap scum around the crown. Very well made piece, not a compromise at all. I mean, if you try one of these on it, actually, i found that I wear this uh, Tudor Black Bay 58 more than I wear my Submariner 114060. 
And I think part of it is the fact that it's 39 millimeters. I've got a seven and a half inch wrist, but it just seems to dissolve on the wrist, meaning that you know, when I wear this throughout the day, I even sleep in it. I don't notice that it's there because it's so comfortable. And it's, it's just the, I feel that the case, the case design, I mean, Rolex cases are always comfortable in the wrist. This is obviously no exception. It just feels good. Again, it just disappears on the wrist. And 39 millimeters is not too small. A lot of people are like, man, you know, I'd, I'd get the, here's the thing. Tudor doesn't really have middle ground at least currently. They've got the original Black Bay, which is 41 millimeters. In my opinion, the original Black Bay is too too tall off the wrist. I think that the case proportions of the Black Bay 58, they nailed it. This fits on the wrist very nicely. It's not too small, it's not too large. It's just a perfect case height, in my opinion. Proportionally correct. And also, I'll go as far as to say, and check out my videos on it, the Tudor Black Bay Chrono, even though it is, the Tudor Black Bay Chrono is a 41, it feels well proportioned, unlike the Black Bays, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of the original Black Bays, but again, everybody's got their own personal wrist preference. To me, this is the perfect size, the Black Bay 58. And again, the Tudor Chrono, nothing wrong with it. It's a larger timepiece, but it's it feels proportional in its 41 millimeter size. And I don't think I would want, originally I thought I might would want the uh, Tudor Black Bay Chrono in a Black Bay 58 style size, which is 39 millimeters. But after wearing the Tudor Chrono for uh, for many, many weeks now, I actually, uh, you know, I wouldn't want it smaller. I think it's the perfect size. But you can see here looking at, again, why Tudor's not a compromise. Look at the dial. You can see those indices, very high quality. This uses Super Luminova. Now, the current reference Mariner, for example, I think it uses what's called Chromalite which kind of has more of a bluish color to it. This is more green. Super Loma Nova is very legible at night. The loom on this is great. Although I will say the best loom that I have in my rotation, and this isn't a strike against Tudor or Rolex, but the best loom that I have in my wristwatch rotation is Ulysses Nard and Maxi Marine Diver. That thing has some incredible loom. But again, the loom on this is great. Unlike a, uh, unlike a Rolex where you're getting Typically, even on the stainless steel pieces, you're getting white gold indices and uh, hands. This right here, I think, are these rhodium? Comment below and tell me. I know, I'm pretty sure it's not white gold, but it's just got a very clean and tool type look to it. That's what I'm saying. Tudor is kind of what, and, and don't, don't laugh at this comment, but Tudor is kind of what Rolex used to be. You know, Rolex now, although they make great wristwatches, They've gone more with the with the shinier type bezels. They've gone more with, you know, even using precious metals in their stainless steel pieces. You know, Rolex has gone for more, even though Rolex is an exceptionally well-made watch and they're built to last several lifetimes, they've gone more for the uh, for the fancy aesthetic, whereas Tudor is sticking with the traditional, you know, this is a tool watch, man. This is something you're gonna swim with. You know, maybe you don't even dive. But, you know, you might jump in a pool, you might go in the ocean, you might jump in a lake, you might want to shower with it, you know, you might get uh, stuck in the rain, you don't have to worry about it. So this is just a prime example of a tool watch, which feels super comfortable on the wrist. And again, you know, there's no, no compromise when it comes to quality here. And that's something I want to preach, is that and the clasp, you know, you got this flip, I think Rolex would call it the flip lock clasp, but it's a similar, you know, type mechanism. Curiously enough though, those ball bearings, where do they, I don't want to say ceramic, that sounds silly, but they may be ceramic ball bearings. Those ball bearings right there, at least the Rolexes that I have, that's not present. So I think that's actually a, is that an improvement? Is that a superior trait that this Tudor bracelet has over the, the Rolex Oyster bracelet? Comment below and tell me. But yeah, this uses this uses a 316 L steel, which is kind of the standard uh, wristwatch steel. Nothing wrong with 316 L. Now Rolex they use uh, what is it nine? Is it 912 or 936 L? It's even a higher grade stainless steel. Is that going to matter to most people on the wrist? Probably not. But I did want to point that out. Uh, the bezel, 60 click bezel, meaning that if you go from say 12 or 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, it's going to be 60 clicks. The current reference Mariner is 120 clicks. So you can hear this. I'm going to shut up. 
just got a very good sound, a very reassuring feel. Again, no qual no compromise when it comes to quality. And that's not just the the visual quality, but the feel. You know, once you feel that bezel click in your hands, and once you hear that bezel click, it just it just yells quality, man, quality, quality. It's like, dude, I'm a tutor. And uh, yeah, it just screams quality. But these are exceptional wristwatches. And if you're on the fence, if you're on the fence about Tudor, you shouldn't be. And if you are, you're probably buying a wristwatch for the wrong reason. Now, granted, a lot of us, you know, it's like, okay, when I have my first successful business venture, I got to get a Rolex to celebrate. And there's a lot of people that have done that. You know, I, I hey, I'll, I'll point fingers at myself. One of my one of my first business ventures that, that did quite well, I said, yeah, I got to get a Rolex. And I didn't want to get the Samariner because I'm like, that's just too... It, it, it's, a, it's an awesome watch, and arguably it's the best wristwatch on the world. But the Samariner also has that stigma associated with it. It's that people that don't even know wristwatches are like, man, i gotta have, I got to have the Rolex that everybody sees and knows that it's Rolex. So that's the, the negative aspect of Samariner. I went to the Samariner for two reasons. Number one, it's iconic. It'll always remain iconic, and it's arguably the most popular wristwatch in the world. Number two, it is a Rolex. And number three, I can wear it anywhere. I can swim with it, do whatever I want to. So that was kind of my way to celebrate one of my first successful business ventures. Now that I've done the Rolex thing and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I got the Rolex, got a few Rolexes, whatever. Now it's kind of like, okay, there's other stuff out there. And Tudor is one of those other things. Tudor is not a compromise. And, you know, having uh, been around the block with wristwatches, you know, not just Rolex, but other big brands, Omega, Panerai, uh, Jeje de Coute, Ulysses Narden, Breitling, just to name a few. Those are all great timepieces, but in the beginning, well, actually in the beginning, I avoided Tudor because Tudor was kind of on a, I don't know if you want to call it a hiatus or what, but it's when they, prior to releasing Black Bay, they were just kind of a weird watch brand. They didn't have any, they didn't have a true identity and the stuff they were putting out at that point in time was just weird. It was weird, man. It was so weird. It, you didn't even know they were there. I mean, you had to hunt for Tudor. And at that point in time, they didn't even sell them in a lot of countries like the United States. So, you know, they weren't as easy to source. And is it even something you would want to try to source because they were, the design, in my opinion, was unappealing. That changed completely with the launch of Black Bay. And I think a lot of this has been strategic. I want to hear what y'all think down below. I think a lot of this has been strategic because Rolex realizes that Rolex has made themselves so upmarket that they're missing out on even that successful first-time customer base. You know, even a person that's created that first successful company, that company may no longer be successful enough to be able to enable them to purchase a Rolex. So they may be looking at Tudor. You know, and Tudor is, it's, it's the brand that is replacing the entry-level Rolex, and Tudor is going to continue to go up market. Tudor is not just going to be an entry-level wristwatch series. I mean, they're going to have references that go up in the, and they already have released some. I'm personally not interested in the, what is it? The, the, the yellow gold, uh, black bay, or is it black bay 58? I think it's a 58. I can't remember if it's a black bay or the black bay 58. I'm just not interested in that, but it does signal the fact that, uh, Tudor is going to try to make even Tudor's range more upmarket, but I like Tudor for what it is. Again, it is not a compromise. It is a very well-made wristwatch. Uh, super good technology. I mean, awesome oyster bracelet. You've got a is a seventy two or seventy or seventy two hour power reserve, anti magnetic hairspring. I mean, you're getting all kinds of good stuff. Just a rock solid movement, and it's not at the price of entry that you're getting uh, for Rolex now. And I mean, it's it's uh, it's just a great. It's not a compromise, but you know, if you're hell bent upon men, go to have Rolex then Tudor's never going to satisfy you. It doesn't matter how upmarket Tudor becomes. If you got to have a Rolex, Tudor's never going to scratch that itch. But if you get a Rolex or two, and or three, or however many you want to get, and then you've scratched that, you've scratched that Rolex itch, then you can start getting Tudor, and you can comfortably enjoy Tudor because you will realize then on your wrist that Tudor's not a compromise, and it might actually put a smile on your face and make you feel like, well, God, I find myself wearing this more. I find myself wearing Tudor more 
than I wear Rolex. You know, and that's that's a true testament to the quality of today's tutor. Again, not talking about tutor of the past. I was not a fan of that. But today's tutor is not a compromise. And it's one of those things, once you get one on your wrist and you experience it, that'll tell you whether or not you like tutor. But until it's on your wrist, you can have all the opinions you want. And your opinion, even after you've been on your wrist, if you get one, you may feel differently. Like, man, well, I, I don't like it because of this, that, or the other. And if that's the case, I want y'all to comment down below and tell me why. Not just tell me why, but tell, tell everybody why. So is tutor a compromise? I definitely don't think that today's tutor is a compromise. Again, emphasis upon today's tutor. Not tutor of the past, but today's tutor. Black Bay and forward. Tell me what you think and be sure to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash Irix guy. And even though I didn't wear my timepieces for tomorrow's sweatshirt tonight because it's in the it's in the washing machine, <laughs> y'all can find all my timepieces for tomorrow merchandise. Book down below. I got sweatshirts, t-shirts, coffee mugs, pint glasses, stickers, and a whole lot more. So I appreciate your support and be sure to subscribe and hey, become a channel member too if you want to. That really helps me out. I am an independent YouTube channel and I am looking for relationships with pre-owned wristwatch dealers. So if you're a pre-owned wristwatch dealer, shoot me a message because I'm looking for someone that I can that I can collaborate with, obtain hands-on access to a variety to a variety of different timepieces to review to review here on timepieces for tomorrow videos and timepieces for tomorrow live shows. So if you're interested, let me know. Appreciate y'all's viewership and y'all have a good one. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.